you are blessed and highly favored. The moment you see me here, the agenda is the same. Together we are saving thousands of people, millions of people out of abusive marriages. So please, share this video to the whole world. Tag people. Share it into groups. Because you will save somebody's life today. And your own life will also never be the same. Thank you so much for doing that. I've got so many calls and I've read a lot of messages in my inbox and people are saying, Quinlet, we are afraid to enter into marriage. We are afraid to date because of this abuse kind of thing. It is too much and people are not honest these days. Hey, it is the devil that is giving you this information. And I am here to break it right now. I am on assignment. Even as I'm standing here, I am on assignment from Elohim. It is not by my power, not by my might. But I will not stand here for the devil to joke with your life, with your marriage. <laughs> Do you know why the devil is giving you this information? Because together you are strong. And you will do exploit. And the devil hate to see this. So he is trying to paint marriage black. He is trying to make marriage ugly. He is trying to let people know that marriage is nothing. We can live without men. We can live without women. This is a lie from the pit of hell. The devil is a liar. Listen, I'm going to give you five strong powerful keys. Divine keys to choose a life partner. For you to know that this person can be my wife, this person can be my husband. Let's go. Number one, God-fearing. A God-fearing man, a God-fearing woman. Look for these people. You yourself, you need to fear God first. Don't go and look for a God-fearing person if you don't fear God. It doesn't go that way. And it is not possible. If somebody doesn't fear God, look for somebody who fears God. Let the Muslims marry their Muslim brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, Christians, believers, marry your brothers and sisters. I know why I'm saying this. We will treat this topic one day. Okay? So God fearing somebody who understands the principles of God. Somebody who is ready to walk according to the rules and regulations of Elohim. Not to go according to his own regulations and rules. Not to say this is what I want and this is what I will do. If somebody fears God, the person knows that one day I will stand before God in judgment. And for that reason, the person will not joke with your own life. Your own life. If you joke with your life, with your life, sorry, he or she will account for it. The person understands that whatever he is doing or she is doing on this earth is not for himself. It's not for herself. He or she is doing it unto God and it is God who will reward him or her. This is the reason for which the person will not joke with you. I'm not talking about people who are morally sound. There are people, they have good morals and they don't, they don't do certain things. But they have not accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. They don't know God. The moment certain things start to change, they will also change. Situations, seasons and times changes those people. But people who fear God, they are firm, they are strong. And they are not moved by any mountain. They are not moved by any wind. They are not moved by storms. They stand in, in times of trouble and uh, trials, tribulations, and they cry unto God. They pray until God intervenes. These are the people I'm talking about. God-fearing people. There is a man, there is a woman who will push you into prostitution uh, to, to, to do drugs because there is no money in the house. Situations and problem uh, and and uh, seasons changes those people. The moment there is anything going on, any wind, then they start to plan with their own mind, make decisions, and see how to adjust their marriages and so on and so forth. Somebody can tell you I'm a, I'm a Christian or I believe in God, but but let something happen right now. You see their character. These are not the people I'm talking about. Look for people who are firm, who can stand wind. And know that their anchor in times of troubles is God. Secondly, number two, a man or a woman with a vision. The moment you meet somebody, ask yourself, where are we going? Because marriage is a journey. You are moving together. 
your hands are held and you are going together. And that is marriage. You need to have a vision. If the woman always wants to go on holidays, buy a wig, do all kinds of things, anything that comes, the person wants to do it. The men also want to go their own way. They follow fashion. They follow everything that comes along, uh, uh, along the time. Things that changes, they also change. These are not people I'm talking about. We have aims. We have aspirations. Okay? We have purposes. And the things that God has given to us. The mandate to fulfill on this earth. So if you meet somebody, the person wants to fulfill his mandate and you want to fulfill yours. So you come together, join it, and move together so that it will be strong. And it will bless generations. If you come into contact with somebody and build together a business, you don't want that business to fail. So you do everything to make sure that the business is going on so that you can also earn your money. If you partner with somebody in business, will you just destroy it? You just get up and take your bag and say, I'm going. Because you know that you have a partnership with the person and you are going to somewhere. Your aim is to earn money. So you not destroy that. And this is how it is. If you have a vision together, you, you, you don't just get up and take your bag and say, I'm leaving the marriage because of something small that happened. Visionless people, they'll just leave you along the line. They'll run away from the marriage. I'm not saying if you are there, you are dying. Stay. There are circumstances that the Lord will even tell you to leave. I'm not talking about those things. But if you are you are with somebody and the person has no vision, you are going here, the person is going here. Now, the third point is common interest. That is why it comes under the vision. You need to have a common interest that we are doing this thing together. Okay? Sometimes people will say, oh, if a, a, a gospel minister gets married to a pastor or somebody who is also doing the same thing, they don't prosper. It is not true. It is not true. There might be lapses. The devil can stand and shake the marriage a little bit. But it doesn't mean that the devil has won. That is the best thing. Somebody who shares the same interest like you do. Now, this thing I'm talking about, any kind of religion you belong to, make sure you, 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 you use this principle I'm talking about. And this fearing God thing. It is very important. It connects with all the things I'm talking about. So if somebody, if you are having the same common interest, the person fears God, the person knows that we are we are moving together, we are all having the same vision, and we are having the same interest, the person will never leave you on the way. The person will not wish you dead. He will not poison your food. She will not poison your food. He will not beat you to death. She will not beat you to death. Because you are moving together. You are building your life together. You are there to affect your generations. And for that reason, you will never destroy that relationship. Unless the person is beating you, the person is abusing you here and there, and the person wants to destroy your life, then you can leave that marriage. That is why the Bible said, even if you meet your husband or your wife, or uh, in adultery, if you want the person, go and take back the person. There is power in marriage, oh. There is power in marriage. Don't let the devil dis uh, uh, lie to you. People are... Trying to make marriage ugly and they are doing all kinds of things. Hey! Do you know the power in marriage? Do you know what you can do with your spouse? There is a secret and power in it. And the devil knows this secret. And he's trying to destroy the foundation of marriage. But I am here to stop his activities. Yes! Now, the, the next thing is origin. A point, a, a point or a place where the person begins or where the person is coming from it is very important if i live in zongo and i like watching i like to eat with people you know like some of us where we grew up you see all people around eh? and some people live in estates and that place there's a gate and a dog and you're not supposed to come out we mingle with a lot of people we play and we do so many things together okay so if i grew in such an area and you also grew in another area and we are coming together we have to check it out because the way you do your things will be different from mine. Maybe you want to eat with spoon. I want to eat with my hand. You want to, you want to press your toothpaste from the middle. I want to press mine from the bottom. So we have to check these things. Because these simple things I'm talking about can break marriage. And it is very important to know all these things. 
origin of the person, where the person is coming from, the country and the town the person is coming from, the village the person, in fact, the language that the person speaks. Nobody should say I'm being tribalistic. I'm talking about reality and it is true. Some of these things have disturbed so many marriages. We don't speak the same language. My in-laws visit and they'll be speaking their language and I don't understand. And then I'll be, I'll be uh, imagining maybe they are, they, are, they are insulting me or they are saying certain things, certain things that are not good about me. You see, I'll, that kind of, I'll not feel comfortable about it. So if you are going to marry somebody, are you ready to learn his or her language? Are you ready to go the way he or she goes? Are you ready to, to do your things like the person does? These things are very important. Check it out. Don't take it out. It is very important because the moment you miss some of those things, it will break the marriage. Yes. And then the next one is flexibility. Okay. We have different kinds of, um, how do you call it? Definition for flexibility. When some, something is able to bend and break, that is flexibility. But my definition is the willingness to, ch willing willingness to change or compromise to uh, the uh, ability to be easily modified okay am i ready to move from um to move from lagos to abuja am i ready to move from enugu to maybe sokoto all those kind of things you have to know the person likes certain things okay the person wants to do his things like this uh, do I also do the same thing? Or maybe today, if I say we are moving from this place to another town, will I, can I go? Flexibility is very important because time changes. Some people want to live with their parents the whole time. They don't want to move from their parents' house. Some people, if they get married, anything they discuss in the marriage, they'll bring it to their parents' house. They'll bring it to their mother. They'll call their mother five times a day. Their father five times a day. Their sisters will come into the house. Their brothers will be coming to the house. They'll say uh, it is birthday. Every birthday, if their sisters or their siblings are ten, they have to buy all of them gifts. This was a tradition in the family before he or she got married to you. And the person comes into marriage, he wants to continue. Check all those things. Check all those things. Sometimes you can make adjustments. But the only thing that can make you stand is the fear of God. It is the fear of God that will make you overlook all those things. It is the fear of God that will make you go to God in prayer and say, God, these are the things I'm going through. I never knew before I entered into the marriage. Please, God, help me. Because if you don't fear God and you don't know God, you cannot go to God in prayer. You pray, you know, if you have faith. But you need to be strong in the Lord to know that God... These things, how can I go through? How can I have my marriage? How can my wife understand me? How can my husband understand me? So that this thing work. How can my partner understand all those things? Check these things I've given to you. These are five powerful keys and they are divine. God-fearing man or a woman, a man or a woman with a vision. People, a man if having the same interest with the person, this is the third one, then origin of the person, where the person is coming from. Then I spoke about flexibility. If the person ready to make adjustment, the person is ready to change certain things, the way he eats, the way she dresses, is the, is the person ready to change all those things? And then, the, uh, the, 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 yeah, that's the flexibility. Willingness to be able to be modified. I want to change, I want to do this thing. You need to check all those things. So, those who were crying and they called me on phone and they were complaining. I have come to your way today and I have given you this message. And I know that the Lord will bless you. You enter into marriage with these things and your life will never be the same. Don't keep this message alone. If you do that, you are being selfish. Share it to the whole world. My name is Quinlet and everywhere on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, the name is Quinlet. Please subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And we thank you so much. Okay, for following, for liking your messages. And we are there to um, socialize together. Okay, I love you all. You are blessed.